high court of heaven. The high court of heaven. <clears throat> Let's turn to uh, Proverbs chapter 30. And uh, I don't apologize for sermons getting negative. I don't think a preacher ever should. Because uh, I think sometimes we need to unpack the negative unpack the negative things so that we can get to the root, take care of the root so the positive can start coming forth. Amen? Amen. And so today may seem a little negative, but uh, it's, uh, it has a, an intent to get everything going in a positive direction. So thank you, Jesus. We're going to be flipping through some scriptures here before we really get into the meat of what I'm talking about. Proverbs 30 Starting at um, verse, let's go to verse 11. Now, uh, Proverbs 30 is talking about the scripture I'm getting ready to read. It's talking about a generation. And uh, what I'm fixing to read to y'all is this is America, okay? This is where we, were, we are at as a people. It's where we're at as a culture. And uh, so the fight that we have is it's going to be a tough one and we got to make sure that we stay submitted and surrendered to the holy ghost first amen because god wants to lift us up not only in his sight but in the sight of those around us but first there needs to be humility and uh, there's a current in this generation that's going the other way how many of y'all know that can i hear an amen there's a generation of self-promotion and, and uh, pride and, and arrogance. And, and uh, it's just it's against God. It's anti-God. And so this scripture talks about that. In verse 11 it says, There is a generation that curseth their father and does not bless their mother. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. There is a generation, oh how lofty are their eyes and their eyelids are lifted up. There is a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. With that in mind, let's go to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Everyone's starting to get warmed up a little bit. Okay. Now here is Paul instruct, instructing uh, his son in the faith, Timothy. And he's talking about a time and a season that's ahead of Timothy. And uh, starting in verse 1, it says, I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. We just read, the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Did you know sound doctrine can be kind of difficult? Did you know sound doctrine actually 
calls men and women to order. Sound doctrine calls men and women to sacrifice. Sound doctrine causes men and women and God's people to walk with God. Okay? But the generation we just read about in Proverbs chapter 30 doesn't want sound doctrine. Amen? And so in our society and in our culture, there's a, a, a generation out there. And when I say generation, I'm talking about young to old. Okay? I'm not just talking about a specific generation like the millennials or the Gen Xers or the baby boomers. I'm talking about this is the current. This is who we are, this is where we're at in America today. And so, this generation of people, they don't want sound doctrine anymore, okay? And so, we want somebody who's going to tell us that everything's okay, even though my life's a wreck. In my years in prison ministry, I've found out that if there's anyone that wants to hear the truth, it's someone who is in a wreck, okay? Their life is out of control. Things haven't been working out. And now they're ending up at the bottom. They're in prison. And I found out that those are the kind of people that actually you would think they don't want, you would think they would want someone to tell them that you're doing fine, everything's okay. But somehow they know deep down in their hearts that that's not the case. And so when a person gets to rock bottom, usually they want to start hearing the truth. Amen? How many of y'all have been at rock bottom and the last thing you went for was somebody who was going to tell you that everything's okay and you're doing well and uh, you know just hang in there and everything's going to work out? Rock bottom never works out, folks. Amen? If you're a human being and, and you've been around this world for any length of time, you and I know that rock bottom's not a fun place to be. However, it can be a springboard and a launching pad to some of the greatest things that you and I can ever experience in life. And so don't ever discount those days where you feel like everything's falling out from under you. You don't know where you're going to go. You don't know what you're going to do. Those are the moments and the times in life that causes us to look for answers. <coughs> there was a time in my life where I, I sat at the rock bottom of, of, of a, uh, a bad financial decision. And uh, I started searching for answers. I started searching for people that were going to tell me the truth that were going to tell me exactly what I did wrong and tell me how to get out of it. And so I found those people and I started listening to what they had to say. A few years later, I got out of the, the debt and the strain and the weight. And so if you're listening to me today and you don't know where you're going to go, life has become hopeless. You're not sure of your future. I want to tell you the truth today, okay? And so that's why we're going to talk about some of these things. We're going to talk about uh, the head of slander specifically is what we're going to talk about. Because I believe that this generation of uh, Americans, Christians, believers, and I believe it's a current that's gone throughout the whole world, um, this is a generation where everyone is entitled to their own opinion. And, uh, you know, everyone's got their own Facebook account, Instagram, social media. And I'm not, listen, I'm not knocking social media, okay? It has its, it may have its certain place in our society, but make sure it's certain, okay? And, uh, <laughs> but anyway, I won't, I won't get into all that. But everyone's entitled to their own opinion. But the problem is, this word, see, we, we, a lot of the stuff doesn't match up to the Bible, does it? And so we try things, and, and before you know it, we're, we're running our life based upon what we see our friends doing, the, the good ideas that are coming into our life, 
And it seems like we're running a never-ending circle, okay? And I'll be the first to tell you that life ain't no fun when it feels like you're a cat chasing the tail, your tail, or you're a rat in a wheel. Amen? It ain't no fun. So let's turn to uh, Numbers chapter 14. And so one of the things we're going to address today is the words of our lips. We're going to address the negative ones so the good things can come out later on. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Numbers chapter 14. <clears throat> Now, this is a, a difficult time, and uh, the children of Israel are going through the wilderness. And in chapter 13, God calls Moses to take a head out of every tribe, a man out of every tribe, and we're going to go spy the land because it's right here before us, and we got to go check things out. And so they send the spies forth. And they're gone for 40 days. And they come back with the report that says, the milk, the honey that God promised us is available. It's right in front of us. We brought the fruit back. Here's evidence. But we also saw that there's giants in the land. And the sons of Anak, they're big guys, and those giants live inside walled cities. And we as the children of Israel, we don't have a city to fortify and defend ourselves with, so we're going to run into a lot of problems with these people. And so Moses, I think... You've just brought us out here to a bad idea. Moses, I don't think this is going to work out. And so, in Numbers chapter 14, let's, let's, let's start at, uh, at Numbers chapter 13, and everything kind of runs together here in these few chapters. It's reading verse 27. It says, And they told him, and said, the, the spies speaking to Moses, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it flows with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong, and dwell in the land, and the cities are walled, and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there, big guys. The Amalekites dwell in the land in the south, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites dwell in the mountains. The Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And so... You see the children of Israel, you see these guys, they were reacting by the seeing of their eyes and by the hearing of their ears. How many of you have ever gotten caught in that trap? Were you reacting because of something that somebody said or something that you saw with your eyes? And doubt began to fill your heart about what? About the direction that you felt just a little bit earlier that God was leading you. Hello. If you've been serving God for any length of time, you've run into this difficulty and challenge. I know what I'm talking about. because, And you all know what I'm talking about. I can see the head shaking. And now here's what happens. These men, they come in with a report. Now listen to what everyone else does. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried. And the people wept that night. Let me ask you now, who's the bad guy in the camp? Who became the bad guy overnight? Uh... Moses, that leader that was trying to lead them into a land filled with milk and honey, and all of a sudden, 
an evil report came up. Let's say this together. We don't want evil reports. We don't want evil reports. Say this with me. We will believe God's report. We will believe God's report. See, there's another world above and beyond this world that you and I sense and feel and touch and see and hear with our five senses. And most people don't live there. That's the difficult thing. And right now, in this situation, the children of Israel, the congregation was living with the world around them. They weren't seeing above their heads. They weren't seeing with their spiritual eyes. And so they got caught in a trap. An evil report came their way, and they lent an ear to it, and they said, Oh, God! Moses, you brought us out here to die. Would to God we'd have stayed in Egypt. Now, that never happens in the 21st century. We're in the New Testament generation now, and those people in the Old Testament, they were acting like a bunch of brats and wimps. But for those of you that are wise and discerning, you know that this generation is no better off than the children of Israel, are we? We got the same challenges, we got the same difficulties, and we have the same reports that we got to deal with day in and day out. Amen? I thank God that there's still a God who loves His people, even in the midst of all the filth and the negativity here in the 21st century. Amen? even in the midst of this generation that we just talked about in Proverbs chapter 30. Now listen to what they did. All of a sudden, the two guys that were trying to lead the thing, they became, they became the bad guys. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron and the whole, con- the whole congregation. We're just a week earlier, days earlier, We were following this man. We were going to go. We were going to take the land. And now, the evil report that they heard overrode where their spirit wanted to go. Excuse me for spitting, but it's just one of these things that I do as a preacher. But anyway, I'm working on that. I'm not sure how I'm going to work on it, but anyway. I just try not to direct it at people. (laughs) I just got to, you know, I got to preach with force, and so stuff comes out with it sometimes. I might have to ask my wife to help me out on that. And the whole congregation, the whole congregation said, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God that we had died in this wilderness, wherefore hath the Lord brought us into this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey, were it not better for us just to return back to Egypt? Preacher, I'll tell you what, this thing is serving God, and the direction you're wanting to take this congregation, I don't know if I want to go. My life was better back before I got into this whole God thing. Life was easier I can make my own decisions. And I didn't have to be accountable to people. I think I'll just pass up. I don't think it's worthwhile for me to take my family where God's wanting to lead us as a congregation. Hold on. Just two weeks ago, You were on fire for God. What happened? We need to be men and women that are stable. We need to be men and women that are unmovable. We need to be men and women, boys and girls, that are always abounding in the work of God. Because there's going to be a lot of evil reports come our way 
in this world around us. They're, they are going to say their stuff. And let me tell you where it's the best place you and I can walk in. Where we're totally free and not governed by what people say about us. You want to find a place of freedom? Amen. That's freedom. That's freedom. And that's where God's taking me as a pastor. And that's where God's leading us as a congregation. Free from those opinions. Free from this Proverbs 30 generation that we just read about. So, anyway, and, and, and uh, so in, in chapter 14, Joshua and Caleb got in the mix and they tried to change their minds. And, but anyway, uh, the people had said too much. They had set their hearts the wrong direction. And God said, okay, you're going to die in the wilderness. So let's flip forward to a few, more, few chapters in number 16. Now, here, it's a cycle, folks. Those that choose to live in the flesh live in a cycle. And we, we're on fire for God one day, and, and the next day, we don't know we want to live for God anymore. We want to do our own thing. We don't want to be accountable. I don't want to go to church. I don't know if I want to do this God thing. And so, we need to make a choice, don't we? This generation, we as God's people need to make a decision, don't we? God wants to help us. So in number 16, it's talking about a few men in verse 1. And it says, And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, princes, y'all, powerful men, very powerful. Princes in the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. So they weren't just a bunch of nobodies in the children of Israel's camp. But watch, watch how this unfolds. In verse 3 it says, And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, now, this sounds so spiritual, y'all. I mean, these guys, they, they had it all figured out. You take too much upon you. Seeing all the congregation is holy. It just keeps getting sweeter. Every one of them. And the Lord is among them. Now, I believe... What they were saying was right. I want to be careful how I say that, because I'm not done yet. I haven't hit the punchline. They may have been right, but they were wrong. There was intent in their lips as they were speaking this word. And even in the midst of flowery words, Evil can be intended. How many of you have ever talked to somebody and they were saying all the right things, you couldn't catch the wrong in their words, but down inside, something just kind of turned around in your spirit. You ever been there? If and when you're walking with God, and that happens, take heed. You've got to take heed to your spirit, man. I'm not talking about someone that's living in rebellion. Because there is the, the same, on, on the opposite end, you can be living a carnal life, and a Christian comes up to you and talks to you, and red flag. You ever hear the term flags went up everywhere? Well, so, so they're both sides. But here I'm talking about men and women that are walking with God. And when you hear these flowery statements, you've got to be careful. Because many times, the wrong intent is coming forth from the lips of that person. But it's usually right, to a certain extent. Brother Rhodes always said, 
that crooks would never counterfeit a $3 bill, would they? Because if they would hand that $3 bill across the counter at a gas station or wherever they're going to use it, there ain't no way you're going to buy anything with it. They're going to counterfeit the real stuff. It's going to look like the real thing unless you are, you have been studying like these tellers at a bank. They get them men and women to feel money. You need to have your fingers feeling right. And as quick as that wrong paper slips through your fingers, you notice it because of the way it feels. It feels different. And so we as men and women, we need to be tuned into the Holy Ghost. We need to have our senses sharpened. We can't be dull. Because dull people get swallowed up with the evil reports. We're going to have our loins girded about and our lights need to be burning. We need to have our eyes bright with the fire of God. Congregation is holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore then, now here's the, here's the indictment. Wherefore then, because these people are holy, why do you lift yourself up above the congregation of the righteous? Isn't it interesting that the proud usually accuse the humble of being proud? Oh, every time. That's what's going to happen. And so when Moses, the meekest man that, the Bible says the meekest man that walked the face of this earth, they accused him of lifting himself up above the congregation, when in reality, this was a man that, was, that had humbled himself before God, and God was the one that was lifting him up. Okay? So you need to be careful. Do you see how slippery our walk with God can, our walk through this life rather, can be? I tell you what, folks, you and I better hang on to God with everything we got. Because in the days ahead and in the times we're living in, if we don't do this thing right and we don't hang on to God and we don't continually humble ourselves before God, somewhere something is going to try to take us out. Now, I'm not saying this to strike fear in your hearts and, and throw your hands up in despair. I'm saying this to you so you get some fight in your bones. We need God. We need His Word impregnated within our bosom. Because this Word is what's going to keep us from slipping. We do things according to what He's saying in the book. We'll be safe. When Moses heard it, he fell upon his face, and he spake unto Korah and all his company, even tomorrow. (laughs) All right, it's showdown time. Even tomorrow, the Lord will show you who are his, and who is holy, and will cause him to come near unto him, even him who he had chosen, who he caused to come near to him. And anyway, take censors and all this stuff. And so it's showdown the next day. And uh, in verse 15, if you're following me there in Numbers chapter 16, it said uh, he calls them up, rebukes them in verse 11 for murmuring against God. In verse 15 it says, Moses was very wroth. Okay, so it's okay for the man of God to get like angry. Okay. Oh, brother. You're not ever supposed to be angry. The meekest man on earth got a little vexed a few times. Okay? So uh, be careful when you, you know, you throw those religious cliches around. Okay? Be careful. Moses was very wroth and said unto the Lord, Respect not their offering. And I have not taken one ass from them, neither have I hurt them. 
And the next day, verse 24, verse 22, it says, And they fell upon their faces and said, O God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, and wilt thou be wroth with all the congregation? Verse 23, the Lord speaks unto Moses. Verse 24, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. So they separated themselves. <clears throat> Moses makes a, pro- makes a declaration. He says, If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord has not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up, and all that per- pertains unto them, and it says in verse 31, and, he, and it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them, and the earth opened up her mouth. Are you serious? Earthquake. I tell you, it was showdown. God backs those who walk in surrender and in humility in His presence. I've known some of the greatest intercessors and men and women of God that were some of the most misunderstood people to their generation. Did you hear what I said? The most misunderstood people. You know why? Because God does things and leads people in certain directions. Men and women that walk with God. And the people that are around them that are watching with their eyes and hearing with their ears don't get it. Much like uh, Nicodemus when he came to Jesus. We know that you're a teacher of the Jews. We know you're right on. We know you got the word of God. But how in the world... Can these things be and does this happen that you're talking about? Jesus looks at him and says, aren't you a teacher? Aren't you a master in Israel? And you don't understand these things? We've got to be spiritual. We've got to do things the right way. So the next day, here's the interesting thing that happens. 41, but on the morrow, all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against who? Moses and Aaron. Here we go again. You see the cycle? Listen, folks, the group of people that Proverbs chapter 30 talked about is in the same cycle. Okay, these weren't... These weren't sons of Belial and barbaric people that the writer of Proverbs was talking about. This was the children of Israel, supposedly God's people. There is a generation whose teeth are swords and their jaw teeth as knives. And so today we as a congregation of believers are going to make a declaration and a proclamation that this will not be us. And that the God of heaven would spare us. And that he would deliver us from such a people and being such a people. Because God wants to help us move forward. And it's going to take men and women of integrity, the utmost highest integrity. And because of that integrity, when you and I choose to walk in it, God will back us. And we need God's backing in life, don't we? Just like he backed up Moses. We need that. As individuals, as families, and as a church body. So let's move on. I'm going to talk about The seven poisonous snakes of slander. Oh, brother. Oh. Yeah, we're going to talk about it. See, there's a court in this land that is above and beyond what our eyes can see. Okay? 
It's greater than the things that we hear. However, many make decisions based upon what their eyes see and what their ears hear. Have you ever considered that the things that are true in the courts of the land and of this world may not be true in the highest courts of heaven? I'm kind of a news junkie in a sense. I, uh, I follow the news and I... I fact I have so much of an interest in it sometimes I've got to pull myself away intentionally I'm sure none of you have anything like that in your life but anyway but I've 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 seen the phenomenon that swept this land in the last uh, 10 15 20 years it's just a bunch of people that are just running in a wheel in a circle just trying to nail down the person that did it wrong and trying to figure out what's going everyone's trying to figure out what's going wrong and who caused the wrong and so we have a cause and effect mentality well if this happened this and this person had their fingers in it so we nail them to the tree they found fault in Jesus and they nailed him to the tree the cleanest, purest man that ever walked the face of this earth. They nailed him to a tree because they had evidence in man's court of law. But they were Israelites. That's not us. We would have never done that to Jesus. We would have never been. And we, we pity Jesus because of what happened to him. And oh, he must have been so terrible. Hold on. Let's make sure that's not you and I. Let's make sure that we're running a different race. Okay? Because God wants to help us. He wants us to be those that will stand in the midst of God's rejection and His rejection. Okay, so let's talk about the seven poisonous snakes of slander. Number one, obviously, is slander. And it says in Psalm 31, 13, it says, I have heard the slander of many. <coughs> Fear was on every side. How many of you have ever been there? How many of you have gotten into a situation where, and I'm sure some of you have, maybe at work, it may be a family situation, where people just started talking about you and you were at no fault at all. How many of you like that? Not me. No one does, okay? Be honest, no one likes it. So the psalmist is in this situation right now. He says, I have heard the slander of many. Fear was on every side while they took counsel together against me. They devised to take away my life. Proverbs 10, 18 says this. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. Say, I don't want to be a fool. Yeah, say it again. Say it a little louder. I don't want to be a fool. We don't want to be that. I don't want truth, light, and life accused of being fools because there is a bunch of slander going on in our midst, okay? And I don't think there is. But listen, when there's any... When, when heaven directs me as a pastor to preach a sermon like this, it's for your benefit. It's to help you out. It's to make sure that we stay on the right side of the fence. So the fear of God comes upon us and we are so scared to do the wrong thing. That's what needs to happen. Like the six-year-old did something that mommy and daddy told him not to do and he gets like really scared. Listen, folks, the fear of God is the same way in God's... Oh, I don't want that fear stuff. You don't want God. The fear of God is for our generation, and we need it. We talked about it on Wednesday night. 
Brother Manny mentioned it. The root of all of this stuff, if we'd had the fear of God, we'd make the right decisions. So he that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. Okay, let's talk about the second one, the second snake. is to be an accuser. Now, the, the word accuser means to charge or to be a plaintiff. The person who brings legal action. Okay? However, there's a person that wants to bring legal action against you and I. And the Bible talks about that snake. And we don't want to be that snake or have any affiliation with that snake. Amen? Revelation 12.10, this is New Testament. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of His Christ. How many of you want that to happen here in this church? How many of you want that to happen in your life? Power, strength, and salvation. I want that. We need it. And the power of His Christ. The power of the anointing. That's what the word Christ means, the anointed one. We need the power of the anointing to operate and flow and function in our lives, in our families, in our homes, in our children, our extended family, our community, whoever we come in contact with, we need it. I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now has come salvation, strength, the kingdom of our God, and the power of His Christ, you know why? You know why all this came? Because the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before God day and night. God's vindicated you and I. Because that old snake, the devil, Brother Rose used to call him the D.E. Bill, he was cast down. However, that's to those of you and I that walk in obedience and submission and surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ. The accuser of the brethren is still running his mouth in this generation like Proverbs 30 talks about. And so we as a congregation are going to ask for deliverance from this spirit in this place today. We're going to ask for deliverance. Because what this is going to do, folks, what I'm talking about, if when God cleanses this house of these seven snakes, and He's going to do it, there is going to come a trust and a unity and a brotherhood in this place that we haven't seen in a while. And that's what we need. You know why? Because we need each other. We need each other. I don't want to go to church with people I can't trust. Amen? I mean, there's, there'll always be something, but in every church, God raises up a core group, okay? And they're walking with God, and they, they're, they're, they're unified, and, they're, and the blessing of God's on. Then, on then, then, then there's also other people that God brings in. And so that core group has got to be walking in that unity and that uh, 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 trustworthy loyalty one to another so the blessing of God can flow out to anyone who comes in the doors. And those people that are in need and that need help, it's important. Okay, so the third snake is this, murmur. Now, the definition for murmur is to grumble. No one's been guilty of grumbling. My mama used to sing a song. <laughs> oh, they grumble on Monday, grumble on Tuesday, grumble on Wednesday, too. Anyway, grumble on Thursday, grumble on Friday, grumble the whole week through. I don't know what it is about children and growing up, but... 
is something that we got to work through as mamas and daddies, don't we? We just don't want to always do things the way we want them done. But the interesting thing is, it seems to work for about every level of structure and authority that you walk in. There is murmuring that you're going to have to fight through. But I believe God wants to deliver His congregation from murmuring. And I believe the effects of God delivering this congregation, congregation from murmuring is going to affect our homes. How many, would you, how many of you all would like a greater level of murmuring in your homes? Mamas and daddies, will anyone give me a truthful answer? How about a lesser level? Yeah, we can all agree with that. See, there ain't no laws to doing good. You can love and there ain't no limits. The good side of things, there's no limits. But the bad, there's fences, there's boundaries, all this stuff. Okay, so in first, and this is New Testament, murmur. 1 Corinthians 10.10 10 says, Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Ouch. Psalm 106, 24 and 25 says, Yea, they despised the pleasant land. They believed not his word. You know, murmuring usually goes on behind the scenes, doesn't it? Usually, maybe on the way home from church. Boy, I tell you what, that preacher the audacity that he had to say the things he said. Boy, I tell you what, my boss, I about had enough of him acting the way he wants to act. And all our life, no. yap, 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 yap. <laughs> Behind the scenes. I actually got Bible to back that up. Keep on reading in Psalm 106, 25. It says, in 24, it says, They despise, they despise the pleasant land. <coughs> they believe not his word, but murmured in their tents behind closed doors. They were yapping. How many of you all want the murmuring to leave from this place? Do I have at least one or two people in agreement? I think we're going to have a whole church that's in agreement. We're going to ask God to knock it out of the park. Get it out of here. If murmuring is the baseball, we're going to hit it over the fence. It's going to be gone. Number four. Talking about the seven poisonous snakes of slander. Complain. Now, complain means to blame or to find fault. Much like grumble. Jude 1.16 says this. These are murmurers, complainers. Now, listen to what the complaining people do. Walking after their own lusts. Isn't that, have you ever, have you ever stopped and, I was, I was looking up these Bible verses this morning, I was like, whoa, I've never seen some of this stuff. So a, a complainer is somebody walking after their own desires, usually. They got their own agenda. And that agenda doesn't coincide with what they're a part of or where they're going. And so they'll complain. To blame or to find fault. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts. And their mouth speaks great swelling words. They got the inside scoop on Mr. So-and-so. 
oh, you've got the insides. Yeah, did you hear what he used to be 20 years ago? Oh, God. Don't ever bring up anyone's past for whatever reason, whether they're saved or unsaved. God's people don't go bone digging. We don't do that here. Having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Okay, let's go to the fifth one. To tail bear. The word tail bear means to slander and whisper. Now listen to what Leviticus 19.16 says. Listen to this. <laughs> it's Old Testament, but it's real. It says, Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. Okay? I think we got an epidemic in the church, folks. And when I say the church, I'm talking about in general, God's people. There's an epidemic, and it's called whispering. It's called slandering. It's called tailbearing. All these snakes sliding through our churches trying to take out those that are righteous and holy and just. That's usually their purpose and their intent for the most part. Thou shalt not go up and down as a tailbearer among thy people. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I... And the Lord. I'm watching. God said He's watching. There's another court. The high courts of heaven. You've vindicated Him. I mean, you've judged Him. And you've, you, you're the judge, the jury, and the executioner in the courts of the land. But you forgot that there's another court you're going to have to answer to. And in my court, she's free. In my court, he's at liberty. I've set him free. I have the highest say. Yeah, but you don't know what he said. You don't know what he did. And I just know this is exactly what he was wanting to do. How do you know that? See, journalism, and I'm back to the, the natural. Journalism in this day and age, in the, in the news world, does, doesn't have to be verified. In the old days, the good journalists back in the old days, they didn't have to verify it by a few different sources. In this day and generation, you can be a pajama-clad blogger in your parents' basement putting out unverified news on the internet because you're a popular blogger. Yeah, that's the truth. And so, this stuff, you know where this stuff came from? It's because the snakes were in the church. And so we got to ask God to cleanse this land from these snakes. Lord, deliver us. Oh, God. In the old days, they used to have to verify it by two or three witnesses. Kind of sounds like the Bible. But in this day and generation, all you've got to do is hear it. And you write it down and you put it on the Internet. That's why I never... This is a boundary I've set up in my life. A boundary... When I know and hear of a man of God, I don't type in his name on the internet to try to figure out what he's done wrong. That's right. You want to get yourself into problems? Do that. And you'll get all the lying snakes and everyone else's opinion on who that man is. Let me give you some advice. The man that's probably got the most cards against him is probably the man that's right. Probably. Maybe not always, but probably. And so I'm not, if I know a man or man of God, I'm not going to Google their name and try to figure out all the bad stuff that people are, that pajama-clad blogger 
living in a basement got to say about this person. Sorry about that, but I have a particular uh, against people. You can just go online and you can just say anything you want and it doesn't have to be verified, no sources. You're just going to say it. It's that thing of being entitled to your own opinion. This world used to be a better place, but it's not. Now it's not. This is where we're at. This is what we've got to deal with. But in the middle of this, God's going to raise up the greatest, most triumphant people that ever walked the face of this earth. In the midst of all this filth and garbage and trash, God's going to do it. Just turn the tables on the devil. Just flip them. You, you're going to bring the barrage of hell upon my people? Huh. I haven't even showed up yet because I am the Lord of hosts. i got armies with me. And we could take you guys out real quick. I think I'm going to be on that guy's side. The Lord of hosts. Amen. Proverbs 26, 22. The words of a talebearer are his wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Okay. We're coming down a home stretch. We only got two more of these snakes to talk about. It's going to hopefully get better. Okay, now this word is not mentioned in the Bible. However, it's a common word that everybody can identify with because you've been on the good side or the bad side of this word sometime in your life. And according to Webster's Dictionary, it didn't appear on the scene until like 1622, so it's probably why it's not mentioned in the Bible. It's called gossip. So I checked out Mr. Webster, and he says, it's a rumor of intimate nature. You got the inside scoop on somebody's life. You know their daddy. You know what their mama did. You know what they did when they were a teenager. Oh, God. Rumor of intimate nature. How about this? Chatty talk. Yep, 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 yep. Just chatty. Talking about this, talking about that. Talk, usually people. I mean, I ain't talking about a personality, a person likes to talk. I'm just talking about chatty talk in the negative form. Oh, get a load of this. News that is never verified. Kind of sounds like gossip, doesn't it? You heard it and you say it. Tell you what, folks, before you accuse a brother or a sister, why don't you pray and seek the face of God on their behalf first? Gossipers never fast and pray. You know why? They're complainers that walk after their own lusts. And people that walk after their own lusts usually don't fast and pray. But we're different. We're going to do different. We need to present a clear stream in our lives and in our hearts, okay? It's got to be clear to where we're trustworthy. And did you know that man... That, that drunk that's out in the ditch, that prisoner that's behind bars, that person that's at rock bottom identifies someone that's genuine and upright. Just by meeting, meeting them and talking to them. For the most part, they can. You know why? They haven't been tainted with all this religious filth that Christians are swimming in. They can identify a phony just about as good as anyone. Listen, you and I can't be phonies. I don't want to be a phony in this life. I want to be someone who can be trustworthy. I want to be someone who, who can help people. Okay? I'm not preaching this message to condemn anyone today. I'm, I'm preaching it to get your spirit alarmed. And that the fear of God would come upon you. 
to help you out of this stuff. A gossip can never be trusted, can they? Even though they may have all the information that everyone wants to hear, you can't trust them. Let's go to the last one. It's called backbiting. It means to talk against. Surely you've never met anyone that backbites. Being filled with all unrighteousness in Romans 129. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers is in there, backbiters. Now listen to the class of people that backbiters, that Paul puts backbiters in. This is the class. You're going to stoop down to this class of people to become God, the secret agent of the day? You're an undercover source. Anonymous source. Be careful when you hear the term. An anonymous source. Coward. <laughs> Backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters. Man, this gets worse. Inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. So these are things that we're going to make a proclamation and a declaration today against. And I told you all the other week, we're going to, we're going to decapitate this thing. And you know what God's going to do? He's going to set an angel at guard in this house. And as a pastor, I'm not going to have to police it. And as a church goer, part of this congregation, you're not going to have to be a police. Because God's going to take care of this house. Amen? So you wonder what I had to roll a tape for. We don't have sand, so I can't draw a line in the sand today. But how about we kind of, as an illustration not only to God, but to man, we draw a line in the sand today and we put some tape on this carpet. Amen? So I think there's three young men sitting in the front row that would be happy to be my helpers. Am I correct? Okay, so what we're going to do, you three will come up here. Let's get this thing rolled out properly to where it's not going to be an issue. Okay. Gabriel, Uriah, Michael. Let's put that right there. Uriah, if you'll take this one in. And Gabriel, I'm going to give you the roll. You're the oldest, right? Uriah, you're going to take this in. And Michael, you're going to get in the center. And we're going to start a line from about right here. And we're going to go about over there to where Emma's at. Okay? You think we can stretch it that far? Okay, you're right. Why don't you come here? Why don't you, all three of you come here. Michael, you're going to hold the center as it gets unwound. Okay? So just kind of keep your eyes on the center. Make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Gabriel, you just roll that thing out. Be careful it doesn't tear. So you might have to just watch yourself a little bit. Whoa, it tore. Okay, well, let's try it again. If it tears too much, we may just have to put a couple. But I want a big line. This may seem elementary, but listen, folks, I'm doing this on purpose. Oh, yeah, that was the time he preached where they put out the tape on the floor. That's what needs to happen in your brain. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. I think your sister would probably take care of that okay. <laughs> uh, be careful. Okay, just be careful when you're unrolling it, because it, it wants to tear. Michael, why don't you kind of help him as it unrolls, okay? Yeah, just be careful. Okay, thank you, Jesus. Okay, so the seven that we're talking about, in case you haven't written them down or you forgot, is slander, accuser, murmur, 
complain, tailbear, gossip, and backbiting. So what we're going to do, I'm going to ask Brother Manny and Brother Dale to come up here in a little bit. And as leaders of this congregation, we're going to ask the God of heaven. And you are going to repeat a prayer after me, and we're going to declare today that this head of slander will be broken forever. And we're going to ask the God of heaven to watch the walls, the gates, and the doors of this house and to protect his people. Because listen, folks, these ain't people, okay? So be careful. These ain't people. Yeah, now break it. Michael, you come over here and you hold this center and make sure you tape it down on the ground. There you go. Look at that. These ain't people we're fighting against. That'll work. We're going to let this up for next Saturday at least. So make sure you tell the cleaner not to pull it up. Okay, could I have Brother Manny and Brother Dale come up here? And we'll get one of you guys on either end of this line. Why don't you stand to your feet? Because I believe to make a proclamation and a declaration, we need to be forceful and intent and intent on, on what's being said. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, if you all just flank me here, and uh, we're going to make a declaration against this. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't you get one on either side here? Thank you, God. <clears throat> okay, repeat after me. Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we make a decree today at Truth, Light, and Life Mission, that this head of slander will be broken, cut off, and destroyed forever. We renounce slander, and we command its powers to be loosed off of this house. In Jesus' name. We come against the accuser of the brethren, we the of the brethren. and we ask, Father, we ask Heavenly Father for your mercy, for your mercy. To, destroy to destroy that accusing tongue in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Heavenly Father, we renounce murmur, Father, we renounce and we ask that murmuring would not be part of our lives. We ask that, our lives. We ask that it would not be part of our homes. And that you would deliver us from it in the workplace as well. Lord, we take this spirit of complaining. And we renounce it. In Jesus' name. Your word talks about. That there be no complaining in our streets. And let them not be found. Within the walls of this house. And the walls of our homes. In Jesus' name. Lord, we ask that you would deliver us from tailbearing and whispering, and that you would cleanse this house from the secret agent of Satan that wants to destroy God's people. Heavenly Father, we come against gossip. And we ask that you would deliver this house from any sort of gossip. Cleanse us, O oh God. Cleanse our lips. Cleanse our tongues. Cleanse the evil intents of our heart. We ask that there would be no backbiting. That you would deliver us from speaking against each other. And Lord God, today, I thank you for setting the angel of heaven in charge of this house, that he would watch the gates, the bars and the doors, and we speak the blood of Jesus round about this household and over our homes and our families. In Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you for the victory. All right, give the Lord a shout of praise and applause. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God.
Thank you for helping us. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. How's that? Yeah, let's blow the shofar. Is there a shofar blower here? Justin, can you blow the shofar? Let's do that and give another shout of praise. Thank you. I feel God in this place. I know God's here today. And He's coming with a little different level of His presence. It's coming with fear. And it's coming with authority. Okay? We need the fear of God and the authority of God to be upon this place in Jesus' name. Okay, why don't you blow that thing? We're going to give another shout of praise and a round of applause. Thank you, Jesus! Yeah! Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you, God. Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, God. I appreciate that, brother. Thank you. Thank you, God. I'm going to ask my wife, Cindy Trissel, and Mary to come up here. God wants to do something with these three ladies. And it's going to be a good thing in the days ahead. <laughs> 